So hello all, this is Vaishnavi Agnihotri. I am one of the generators of group G26. The name of our group is Bikers Paradise, which somewhat indicates what problem we have taken. And in the upcoming slide, we will be uh, covering more upon what our problem is, how and how we have solved it. So how many of you enjoy bike riding? It has always been a great pastime for youngsters like us from providing us a unique sense of freedom and independence to helping us interact with a wider set of people. Biking has a huge amount of benefits. It's used by people to go to office. It is used by the delivery people to deliver pizzas to our home. And it's also used as riders. And it's also used by riders to fulfill their passion as we have discussed earlier as well. So here, let us look at some statistics. Uh, about 67.24% of people in India own and ride a motorcycle. Then more than 35% of population of India lives in the Northern region and the temperature range in summers in the Northern region afternoon is uh, from 37.8 degrees Celsius to 42 degrees Celsius. All these three statistics indicate us to a particular problem. So, what the problem is? I guess we have found it. The problem lies in the seats. The problem lies in traveling uh, in the hot summers through the two wheelers or through the uh, bikes or motorcycles or other uh, vehicles. So in hot summers, the temperature of bike seat ranges from 38 degrees to 42 degrees Celsius, which is not at all a convenient for the ride. So how to regulate the temperature of seat? It is a big question now. So what are the solutions now proposed by us? Firstly, we can apply a face change material below the leather. We'll be dealing more about this solution in the further slides. Secondly, we can use acrylic layer. Acrylic layer is somewhat softer and it can absorb a large amount of heat so that the temperature of the bike seat is regulated. Thirdly, we can use a material which is a fusion of PCM and leather as a seat material. So we might not take only leather and only PCM as two layers, but we can take a fusion of both of them, which would be further re uh, durable, reliable, uh, scratch resistant, waterproof, and it, it would also regulate the seat temperature for a longer duration of time. And uh, as we know, leather is a black material. So, and if, and the emissivity of leather is also very high. So if we treat leather as somewhat a black body, so it would keep heating till the time the till the time the bike seat uh, comes to the uh, surface, it's the, the, comes to the temperature of the sun. So indeed, that's a very uh, ridiculous fact, but it's true. So we can use a material with a low uh, conductivity, uh, which has the conductivity lower than the leather uh, to uh, absorb far less amount of heat than leather absorbs. So phase change materials are suitable for storing thermal energy in the form of latent heat and release when required by changing its phase from solid to liquid and vice versa. They absorb or release quantities of heat at a fairly constant temperature and thereby maintaining desirable and ambient conditions. Studies conducted to compare phase change or the latent heat and sensible heat storages have shown that a significant reduction in storage volume can be achieved by using PCM as compared to sensible heat storage. So as we can see in this diagram as well, uh, the uh, temperature of the PCM increases till the time it reaches to its melting point. Then due to latent heat of vaporization, the temperature becomes constant. And after the PCM is fully melted, the temperature further increases. So now what are the features of PCM? Why we have used PCM only? It is non-toxic. It doesn't harm the environment while uh, it's forming. Thirdly, it has high latent heat. So how does this factor affect us? Mm -hmm. Materi these materials uh, have high latent heat. That is their latent heat is above 200 kilojoule per kg. And is, it is the most de desirable property for any PCM in any application. It has high tensile or tearing strength, both above and below the melting point of the PCM. 
Further, it is so stable that it can be easily heated or cooled without leaking out the space change material. So these are the properties which answer the question why we have taken PCM only as our solution. So up now there are various space change materials available in the in the uh, market. So further comes the question which PCM should we choose for solving uh, our problem of regulating the bike seat temperature. So we have choose uh, the PCM HS29 as our de desired phase change material. Uh, there are two reasons for that. Firstly, uh, it has relatively low melting point, uh, low melting point that is from 26 to 29 degrees Celsius. So this temperature can be easily attained under the hot sun, which is the first thing. Secondly, the solid form of HS29 has a relatively high thermal conductivity and the liquid form has a relatively low thermal conductivity. So here is our technical problem statement. Consider that the bike seat is rectangular and is exposed to a surrounding temperature of 45 degrees Celsius. The upper surface of the seat is made of leather. That is a thin layer of leather of conductivity is given and below it lies a phase change material HS29. Consider the initial temperature of the bike seat before it is taken in the hot sun to be 20 degrees Celsius. It is proposed that the bike seat temperature stays in a range that is comfortable for the biker that is 20 to 25 degrees Celsius for a particular amount of time. So here is a technical problem statement and further we look uh, what we need to find using this data and this problem statement. So firstly, we need to find the time for which the bike seat remains in the given temperature range of 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. Secondly, we need, to we need to analyze the temperature profile with and without PCM. And thirdly, uh, we need to find how the time changes with changing the mass of PCM used. So we have taken a particular mass of PCM and for that we are finding out the time required for the PCM to melt fully. So here is our control volume analysis and we'll look at the modes of heat uh, transfer also through this. So we have chosen our control volume to uh, be surrounded uh, the, that our control volume is surrounding the uh, layer of leather and we have described the conduction convection and the radiative losses. Firstly, uh, the irradiation would occur uh, from the sun to the leather which would increase the temperature of the leather sheet. Then as the temperature of leather is increased, uh, the conduction would occur from the leather to the phase change material to increase the temperature of the phase change material. Now, as the temperature of leather is high, the convection uh, would occur from the, mm, from the air to the leather. As the ambient uh, surface temperature, as the ambient temperature of air is higher, and the as the leather has high emissivity and is black in color, it would also cause radiative losses. So that was all about our mode of heat transfer and the control volume analysis. So here is our set of assumptions, and uh, we'll also cover why we have opted for these assumptions. So firstly, we have considered that ambient air temperature is constant for the entire duration of consideration. So we have taken this uh, assumption because we are not accounting the spatial variation of temperature with respect to time. Secondly, the technical thickness of the layer of leather is small as compared to the layer of PCM so that our control volume analysis could be done in a better manner. Surrounding air is an ideal gas so that the calculations could be done uh, more accurately. And the last assumption is that the initial temperature of the whole bike seat, including leather and PCM is same. So that, and we are not accounting the heat transfer through the bike uh, body, the, through the bike body, like the engine or stuff like that. And we are keeping the initial temperature as same because uh, through that we can keep the uh, temperature of the surface and the temperature of PCM as the same, which would further uh, key, uh, make our calculations easier. That would be described in the upcoming slides as well. Here is our expected temperature profile. Uh, firstly, we see that if we don't use PCM, the temperature uh, increases always. 
and if we use pcm we can see uh, that the temperature becomes constant or the rate of temperature rise decreases uh, for the time the temp the pcm starts melting before the pcm starts melting the temperature rises there and after the pcm is fully melted then the temp then also the rate of temperature rise is good enough so now we'll be treating all of this mathematically and we'll use we'll be using heat transfer equations so firstly we have taken the velocity of air to be 2 meter per second uh, the value of k is 13 to 10 k per sec and we have defined the following quantities and we have find, found the value of beta as we have we are taking free convection here uh, in the nu correlation we will be using nusselt correlation in place of uh, reynolds number correlation so we need to find the value of beta so beta is 1 by t and as we are taking the film film temperature uh, our t becomes t infinity plus t s by 2 so beta the value of beta would become 0.0031 and the we have found the value of nu, nu is 20.92 into 10 k per sec so we have um, uh, considered the rayleigh number uh, correlation and we have found the value of nusselt number Uh, and then the value of uh, h which is the convective heat coefficient to be 16180 then we uh, deal with separate cases firstly for the leather we need to find the temperature of pcm as a function of time so firstly we are dealing with the case uh, that the uh, the pcm has not come to the to its melting point we are dealing with the case uh, before the pcm attains its melting point and we are calculating the time that is required by the pcm to attain its melting point so then uh, we have considered this the energy balance equation and the limits for temperature we have kept as t surface to the t melting point of pcm because we have taken the assumption that initially uh, the temperature of the surface and the temperature of pcm is same that's why we have we can take into account t surface and we have inserted the limits for time as 0 to t so up then uh, from that we consider we have got the time uh, required by the pcm to reach its melting point then we calculate uh, the pcm latent heat part the uh, time required by the pcm to fully melt so that we have calculated as delta t so we have considered it has uh, delta t k by h ts minus t melting point to be uh, m pcm into l m pcm we have taken as the fixed mass of pcm taken and l is the latent heat of vaporization so here is our calculation and results uh, we have calculated the heat loss due to conduction convection and radiation and we have calculated the time uh, which is required for different masses of pcm that is 100 grams and 200 grams so as we can see uh, as the mass of pcm increases the time for which the bike can stand in the sun also increases we consider the time uh, for which the bike can stand in the sun is uh, the total time which is required by the pcm to fully melt like from the time it starts increasing its temperature to the time the pcm fully melts that time we have considered as the time uh, for which the bike can stand in the temperature so hereby we have reached to our conclusion that the temperature of the bike seat remains constant for a longer period of time when pcm is put below it and uh, the temperature of the bike seat remains approx 12 to 15 degree cooler and we can make the seat highly durable by adding other chemicals and lacquers to the pcm and uh, it is advisable to keep the bike under the sun only till the time pcm melts and if we uh, extrapolate our calculations and we find the um, uh, pcm required if we want to uh, keep our bike standing in the sun for 2 hours we get the value of pcm to be 1.5 kg 
so here is our future possibilities and future plans uh, firstly we want to account for the spatial variation which we have not considered in this problem and uh, also we have considered that there is no heat transfer occurring between the seat and the rest of the bike but this could not happen as uh, the bike has a lot of components that generate heat like engine so we need to consider heat transfer through bike as well then we can calculate uh, the same time using different pcm or we can calculate the same time using a set of different pcms and we can test it with the actual conditions like we can uh, actually measure the seat temperature with after few hours uh, when with and without pcm so these are some of our future possibilities and that's all from our side.